Well, welcome everyone to Race Face TV and this edition of Race Face Spotlight. We've got a special guest with us today. We're going to go out to Arvada, Colorado, where we're going to find Cassidy Hines. Cassidy, how are you doing this evening? I'm good, Rod. How are you? I'm fine. So the question is, did I say the name of the city right? Is it Arvada? Um, it kind of depends on how you say it. I say Arvada, but some of my friends say Arvada. It really just depends. Okay, but we're in the right state. We know we're in Colorado. So I got to ask, what's the temperature like in Colorado? It is February still, so. Um, it's pretty cold. Today, I think it got up to like 16 or 20 degrees. It was pretty cold out. <laughs> Heat wave, 16 degrees. So that's cold. How much snow do you guys have? Not that much. It's just really cold. Well, that kind of ruins the idea of putting a snow plow on the front of the micro sprint and going out and raising some money doing some fast snow plowing jobs. It does. <laughs> it does. All right. So we'll hope we'll we'll pray for some snow for you. So let's kind of get right into this. Let's talk a little bit about your 2018 racing season. Some of the highlights that you felt um, that you went through. And I know uh, for people that have been following you, we all kind of know that you're kind of wrapping up your quarter midget career. You're going to be doing some some major races, some of the, the bigger races around the country this year. But uh, that at every weekend out there uh, from the quarter midget side, that's going to kind of go away. So what do you feel about that? Are, are you excited to be moving on or is there a little part of you because of so many friends that you have? I know one thing that every time I see you at a racetrack, you have people around you all over <laughs> and a lot of small young kids. So I think that's a great thing. So what, what, what's your feelings about kind of wrapping up your quarter midget career? Um, I'm definitely going to miss all of the kids because they're like my second family. They're all like my siblings. Um, they all look up to me and all of my older friends. Age. Um, but I'm definitely excited to start 600s and moving up from there. Um, so yeah. All right. So you <laughs> rolled out that bad boy the other day. I saw that you were... I think they kind of surprised you, I guess. I saw it sitting in the driveway and I saw you coming out of the house. And I'm going to tell you what, that is one bad looking micro sprint car. So tell us a little bit about it and how excited you're going to be to get in that. Um, I'm really excited to get into it. Um, we're starting the racing season with that in March sometime. I don't know the exact schedule, but I started it. Um, I practiced it a few times, and from what I practiced, it's really fun, and I really enjoy it. So tell us the biggest difference. What What's your biggest feeling different? I know the car's bigger. I know it's got it's a heavier car. It's faster. So what's it like to take that step? Is this going to be a big step for you, or does you feel like you're just going to naturally kind of move into that car? Um, I feel like I'm naturally going to move into it. I mean, dirt... For me, I feel like it comes a little more natural, um, so I feel like I'm going to move into it a little easier than some other people might. But All right, so now you got a wing on top. Is that going to make a big difference as well? Um, I think so. I've practiced it without the wing, um, so we still need to get out and practice it with the wing. But I don't know. It might make a big difference. It might not. I think you're going to be surprised when you get out there and, and you start running those laps when that speed gets up, how much that wing is going to plant you uh, on that track. So that, that's kind of a neat thing. You're, you're, going to, you're going to run some winged and non-winged races this year. Is that correct? Yeah. And can you give us an idea of some of the tracks that you're, that uh, I know your schedule isn't in concrete yet, but some of the tracks that you might look be, be looking forward to visiting for the first time? Um, well, we'll be visiting Callahan and Honor Speedway down in Pueblo. Um, I believe we're going to be visiting I-76. Um, and I can't think of any others right off the top of my head. Okay. So, you wrapped up the 2018 season. Any, any races that kind of stand out before we get into this past weekend? We'll kind of save that for like the icing on top of the cupcake here in a minute, but what are some of the races in 2018 that you say that, man, I just really ran good there. It was exactly what I wanted to do. Um, so share that a little bit with us. 
Um, so some of the races that stood out um, were my national championship in Modified World Formula down in California, Livermore, Livermore California at the Western Grands. Um, some others that I got were six track records and my podiums at the Winter Nationals in Vegas. Okay, so you, you won the Grands. That, that's a, that's a mm -hmm. pretty cool thing. And, and let me ask you something. Yeah. I have to ask this because I, I, I was at Vegas with you. Um, the boy to girl ratio there is huge. I mean, it's kind of like nine boy racers to one girl racer. What's it like for you? What it, What's that feeling like when you kind of put the hammer on the boys? Um, it's definitely, I feel like um, when I beat boys, I definitely feel powerful like girls we can do anything that boys can do and possibly even better than they can do um i just yeah i feel powerful whenever i beat a boy just because you know they have that label that racing is a male dominated sport and girls don't get that label very much so well i can tell you one thing from watching you in vegas is that when you get determined and you're just like i'm gonna go out and do this there's no stopping you. I was talking to your mom and dad about that a little bit. I was like, man, when she gets that race face on, how, what a plug. It wasn't intentional, <laughs> but it is. But, it, but when you do, when you get that race face on and you're like, you're in that car and you're just like, I'm going to go out and do this. I mean, it, you're, you're like unstoppable. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's, that is a, that's a big, that is a big, um, that's a big deal because it's, it's hard to do that sometimes. Sometimes you kind of take things for granted, but I, I can see that you've got that. It's, it's all about the competitiveness that you have inside of you, and that comes out on the track. So that, that's a compliment, just so you know that. So let's, uh, let's talk a little bit more about last weekend. I'm just going to kind of turn it over to you. I want you to kind of walk through, you know, where you were racing and, and what kind of amazing results that you actually had last weekend. Yeah, so last weekend we were down in Pueblo at the Colorado State Fairgrounds. Um, we were doing the Region 8 Indoor Series. And so um, we we're in the running for second place points. And if I would, in my unrestricted animal, and if I would beat the first place um, points winner, if I would beat him for two races, um, this previous weekend, if I would beat him in both mains, um, I would get first place. And so on Saturday, I got second in both heats and I got first in the main um, for Unrestricted Animal. And then I also, on Sunday, I timed, the, it was a timing day and I got quick time and track record in Unrestricted Animal, and I won that race too, so that put me in first place for points, so I got the championship in that class. Um, and then in my Heavy 160, I got second place points for um, overall, and then in Light World, I got second, second place points and um, second or third place points in that overall. So overall, it was a pretty good indoor series. I would say that was pretty stout <laughs> indoor series. <clears throat> you, win a yeah. you win a national championship. Is it, and I, I gotta ask this question, how much different is it racing indoors? Besides maybe a little bit more noisy. Is, is, the, is the track different? Is it, is it more consistent? Um, what, what's your opinion on that? Um, it's a smaller track and it's faster, I think. Um, it's flat, so it's definitely different. Um, but I, I love it. I love the indoor series. Um, it's, it is, it's noisy. Um, but other than that, it's pretty much the same. I think there's a little bit, um, less room so it's smaller track like i said and then it's also a volleyball and tennis court 
that we're racing on. So. Oh, okay. All right, well, that's pretty cool. All right, so <laughs> what would you say that you're looking more forward to in 2019? Would that be going out and winning some of the, the larger quarter midget uh, championships, or are you really looking more forward to getting in that micro sprint and finding out what you can do there? <laughs> I'm definitely more looking forward to the micro sprint and seeing what I can do there and seeing how well I can do with that being my first season in it. So, so I got to ask the question, who was responsible for laying out the paint scheme and all the, all the, the sponsor stickers on that? Because this car is just amazing. Did, did you do that or does, does someone else in your family get credit for that? Um, we um, have a family friend who raises midgets and he uses his graphics designer um, in Denver and it's called Impacted Graphics and Designs. And so they designed our car for us. Well, there you go. A great, a great plug for that guy. Impacted graphic designs. If you're looking to, to get a cool looking car, you need to check those people out because her car is, is just amazing. So I think something that a lot of people doesn't, maybe don't know about, uh, about Cassidy is how good of a student that you are. You're not only really um, good on the track, but when it comes to the off track side, as far as your studies and stuff like that in school, um, you're basically a straight A student and or above. I, I think I, you told me that you got a 5.0 grade point average. I don't know where you go from there. Is that on a 5.0 <laughs> scale or is that on a 4.0 scale? That's on a 4.0 scale. So I took, yeah, I took all seven classes last semester and I ended up with a 5.0 GPA because I didn't take, I didn't like drop in classes. I didn't um, have any off hours. So I wanted to get all of my credits up. So I got a 5.0 when most people only get like a 4.0 and I didn't even know that you could go above a 4.0. I started to say, so. I just got educated here. I didn't know that I thought if it's a 4.0, that means that you got an A, but to get a 5.0, so that's like an A plus plus? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Is that because those some of those classes are just harder so you get more credit for them? Is that how that works? Yeah, they're AP and honors classes, so they're college courses. Um, so I get extra credits for those classes because they're harder. All right, so let me ask you something. I mean, we talk a lot about race car drivers being smart. Do you think that that intellect helps you on the racetrack as far as being able to kind of see things? And do, do you plan the race out in your head um, as far as how um, you're going to drive it? I think I plan it out in my head. I don't know. I I think once I'm on the racetrack and I'm about to do something, I like set them up and I think about the possibilities. So I definitely think that having the having good grades and being like smarter, I think that does help on the racetrack. I do too. I think we should get a sign and put like on your back tank or something that says not allowed to pass me unless you're smarter than me. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. That's a good one. <laughs> so, all right, get your graphics guy. If that's what we need to put on there. If you're not smarter than me, you can't pass me. Or you have to pass me yep. on the outside or something like that. All right, yep. so let's, uh, I know that we're getting involved a little bit with a, um, a charity organization that uh, I, I think that, I, I think you're going to shine there. And that's what I was saying to somebody the other day, I said, you know, I, I think I've got a, a driver, Cassidy Hines, that's going to just be amazing at this. Because like I said, every time I see you at the track, it's like all the little kids are just drawn to you. I don't know if I've ever seen you in Victory Circle that you haven't had a smaller, younger kid in your arms, which again, I think <laughs> is great. But it's the Friend of Jacqueline Foundation. And it's something that we're going to be racing for as a group of race face drivers um, in 2019. And this is all about helping kids uh, that are going through pediatric brain tumors and or other childhood cancers. So um, are you looking forward to kind of getting involved with that? I am definitely looking forward to getting involved with Friends of Jacqueline. Um, I'm, I really do want to make connections with some of these kids. And I really feel like making connections with them will definitely 
help them and help me as a driver. So yeah, I'm very I, excited. Yeah, I, I, I think you're gonna, like I said, I think you're gonna really shine there. We had some kids down, uh, actually a bro, uh, a two brothers that were battling pediatric cancer at Daytona over the weekend for Timothy Peters when he ran in the truck race. And right in the middle of the race, he just screamed out, this has been the best day ever in my life. And that's kind of when it hit me because we take being at the track, we take being around racing and, and people like that um, for granted sometimes. And this was one of those cases where it, it, was, a, it was a pretty special deal. Yeah. Okay, well, we're just about done. Any sponsors you want to thank or anything else that you want to want to talk about during this interview? Yeah, I'd like to thank um, all my sponsors, Frontier Restoration, American Roofing Supply, Stephen Sons Auto Glass, Susan, Susan, Susan Finicelli Bookkeeping, and Impacted Wraps and Graphics. All right, great. So there you've got it. Cassidy, we hope that you have a very, very successful 2019 season. We're going to be checking back with you frequently. You can catch uh, Cassidy on Race Face Driver Updates once her season gets started every week. And you can basically go out and connect with Cassidy. Give us your Facebook and your Instagram URLs. Um, my Facebook is Cassidy Hines Racing. And my Instagram is also Cassidy Hines Racing. Okay, so Cassidy's got a lot of followers out there, but if you haven't followed her yet, go out, click on Cassidy, follow her on Facebook, connect with her on Instagram, share with your other racing friends. This is a girl to keep an eye on, and I know that she's going to do great things in 2019. So again, Cassidy, thanks for being with us tonight. Thank you, Rod. Okay, everybody, as we always say during our program, racing season is now back in full swing. So go out and support local racing in your communities. And again, if you've never been to a quarter midget race, I encourage you to go out and check one out. And if you've never been to a micro sprint race, you definitely got to do that. So again, thanks for being with us and we'll see all of you back here real soon.